Good morning, it's Nikki. Today I want to talk about disrupting your industry. And uh, that sounds very bold and rebellious, doesn't it? But hopefully you will take away a few nuggets just to think about where you want to take your personal brand and how you do business, how you operate, how you show up in life and how you can kind of do things on your terms. You know, all the stuff that I talk about. So when I started in 2012 as a coach, nobody was talking about coaching and it felt like, I mean, it felt like this sort of underbelly of society in the fact that, you know, if I'd said that I was a part-time gangster, um, it would have probably got a better response because at that time, and I think I was 30 at the time or 31, um, nobody was really talking about it. And also, who was I to become some kind of life coach, business coach at that time? And what I was listening to um, was a lot of stuff across the pond. So it had a very different vibe, I would say, to the way that I kind of show up. So it was quite aggressive. It was quite hard hitting. It was like, I'm going to tell you about what you should do with your life. It was quite confrontational. And it was either that or it was a bit dreamy. And it was a little bit, you know, what you're looking to do is like find your best life. And it felt a little bit whimsical. And when I was starting, because I didn't have necessarily many people in the UK who could kind of show me the way, I probably made a few mistakes. I definitely made a few mistakes in the beginning because I got kind of influenced by what I should be doing. So some of the copy that I maybe put out, I keep saying maybe like perhaps I didn't do this. There were probably bits now, let's just say this, there were probably things that I did then that I wouldn't do now because at that time I didn't know any better. You know, Instagram was only just starting. It wasn't really a thing. Instagram wasn't really a thing. How arrogant of me to say, and probably people at Instagram are like, uh, yes, it was, Nikki, what are you talking about? But what I mean is people weren't necessarily talking about the things that they're talking about today. So it did feel um, that we couldn't be public about our self-development. Certainly people weren't talking about mental health or hashtag be kind or any of those sorts of things. So I had to, in those early stages, take and borrow what I could and that was listening to people who had done things that were vaguely similar but perhaps had different values. And very quickly I noticed that I was trying to fit a square peg in a round hole and there was something quite jarring about this process. And I didn't quite know how to show up and how to deliver and present myself. So very quickly in 2015, I had my son. And with having a baby and becoming a mum for the first time, uh, everything changed. I mean, that could just goes without saying. But certainly in terms of my capabilities and the way that I was living my life, it didn't feel right to take on the persona of online entrepreneur who's working 18 hour days and doing X, Y and Z and they're building things and they're smashing it and all this quite heavy language. Because the truth was I wasn't smashing it. <laughs> I was putting one foot in front of the other and making a sandwich and trying to get my baby to sleep and try to figure out how I could earn an income without me having to go and work all these hours. How could I package up all the things that I knew without me having to leave my baby, essentially? Um, because we didn't really have any support at that time. You know, there wasn't necessarily the funds to go, yeah, I'll just put my baby in nursery five days a week. And it's very much a personal choice. And um, we've all got to do what we need to do, don't we? But I was determined to find a way because actually me working, I mean, never mind the baby, for me actually working five days a week in the same place is not suited to my personality. So some people absolutely love that. Anyway, I'm going to move away from that childcare conversation because it's quite controversial and everybody must do what is absolutely right for their family. I'm going to come back 
to what I knew I then needed to do, which was to listen and to remind myself who I was in person, who I was when I met somebody for the first time, who I was when I sat sat down at a wedding and I introduced myself to the person on my left and the person on my right and was like, hi, nice to meet you and what I would do and how I would operate in normal life. And very quickly, I realized that I wanted to be, (laughs) this sounds so narcissistic that I'm spending so much time thinking about this, it's so self-indulgent, but bear with me. And it's so obvious when I say it, but I figured out that I wanted to be the same person in real life to who I was online. And that somehow was some kind of revolution to me, like what, really? I can talk in this way, I can write in this way, I can do videos in this way, and it's all gonna feel good. So the first step that I took in that process was really listening to how do I know that I'm doing those things? What are the signs, the signals, the nudges, the senses that I get when I know that I'm doing stuff that feels like me? And I guess that's your first exercise as well, because it's really hard to build a personal brand sometimes when you're going out there alone, because it it does come down to you. And even though people will tell you, there's a blueprint, just follow these three steps, it has to feel good to you. Otherwise, you're just never going to do it. Otherwise, it's going to catch you out later down the line. Otherwise, it's just going to feel a bit icky and you're not going to make the progress you want. So it's kind of like fashion, isn't it? You know, some people might say, this is the kind of dress with this kind of neckline or this sort of length, and this is the season's must have. And sometimes I look at things in fashion and I go, I mean, you know, maybe it is great in Paris and Milan, but it's not, it's, no, it's not gonna work. (laughs) It's not going to work. And getting to that stage where you can say no, where you can say, "Mm, it's maybe a bit of that, but I'm going to do it in my own way. It's hugely empowering. And do you know what happens then? When you step into that version, you suddenly have more energy. You have more creativity. You have more solutions available to you. It's kind of like if you've been in a conversation with somebody or you get stuck next to somebody on a train and they just want to talk at you the whole time and you're just thinking, I just sort of want to read my book. I want to read my book and relax and not be chatting. Thank you. And you can come off that flight or that train or, you know, whatever the conversation might be and you feel completely and utterly drained and you just want to shut down and you can't see the woods for the trees. So doing that and giving myself full permission to try this way, try this alternative way, that took guts because when somebody, well, when everybody is telling you to do something differently, it's, it can make you doubt yourself. And you've really got to dig deep and go, no, I feel like this, I feel like this feels like the next step. No, actually, I I know you're saying that and I know you're saying it's going to 10x my income, but I will take step one and two out of the nine step program, but equally I've got to make it sound like me. That's hugely, hugely bold sometimes because especially at the beginning of your business journey, your entrepreneurial journey, or that moment where you're like, do you know what, I think there's more to this. I think I could go to the next level, or I think I could really elevate this personal brand. It takes a lot of guts to go, yes, I know you guys are supposedly the experts, but actually I'm gonna listen to what I want. And that's definitely been a work in progress for me. And there's times where I do get distracted or I do think, oh my goodness, maybe I should be doing TikTok. Maybe I should be roping in all the members of my family to do um, some kind of routine. Um, But then no, I have to go, what am I here to do? And I think that's the moment where you have to keep coming back to the vision. 
you have to keep coming back to what you are trying to build. And I've always had this sense that I'm here for the long run. I was talking to a client yesterday and she was like, I want to build something that's like really amazing. And I want to be doing this in 10 years time. And that's exactly how I feel. I don't feel like I'm going to do this for another 18 months and go, yeah, do you know what? I'm going to become a carpenter. It's just not going to happen. Okay, the final point I want to share with you today is about taking inspiration from other industries, other companies that are quite far away from perhaps the service or the product that you offer. And I always do this when I feel stuck or I feel that shift where I go, something something needs to move, something I need to create a ripple or something, or I'm just getting that nudge that I've got to shake things up a little bit. So instead of just following other coaches, or in terms of my acting work, like I'm just going to follow other actors, I get really creative with where I get inspired. And the first place I usually go to is YouTube. Now, I absolutely love YouTube and um, I spend a lot of time there. I love just observing different culture, different um, stories, um, different points of view, discussions, um, understanding human potential, going behind the brand of different things. And I'm always looking at how other people do things. So how this could translate practically, well, maybe think about those companies or those brands or those other people that really compel you. So every time they land in your email um, inbox, you're like, oh yes, I can't wait to hear from you. Or I love the way that they put together their colors or the way they made me feel as a customer was second to none. And there are some companies sometimes, you know, when you do the live chat, when you're stuck or I mean, I'm always like down some tech hole with somebody. Um, I remember this guy helping me a couple of years ago. By the end of it, I was like, this guy is amazing. Like, should I invite him for Christmas dinner? How, how are we gonna, wow, this, this, I felt so heard and so understood that it was almost this case of like, just take my money. Like I'm never ever, going to deviate from this company because what you do is incredible and how easy you make my life feel is just, I'm just so grateful for it. I mean, I went down a whole spiritual path with this situation, it seems. Um, but I want you to think about what do you need from the transaction? So instead of somebody flipping it around of going, this is how you should do your email sequence or this is how you should introduce yourself online or this is what you should write in the comments on your Instagram post. Have a little look and notice what other companies are doing and pay attention to the trends. And there might other be other things as well that you can start to incorporate into your own business. So one of my goals for 2021 is really thinking about my legacy, I guess, and I mean, this is a big moment, but um, which I haven't really shared, but I have a real sense of wanting to give back. And it's very much still in the process of what that might look like. But with everything that's gone on in 2020, I can't ignore that anymore. I can't, and not that I was before, but I feel like it's like the end of a club night where, not that I've been to a club for a while, where the lights suddenly come on and you're like, whoa, whoa, I can see everything that is going on. Oh my goodness, I can see the reality of the situation. And I think that's what 2020 has done for so many of us. Like we were aware of things that were happening, but that brightness has been turned up so much. And we have to incorporate those elements into our business. We have to be aware of them. We can't just put out content and go, I just wanna share the real me. Like we have to be sensitive. We have to be aware and ahead of the curve and discerning about how we're showing up online. And that's one of my goals for 2021. Like how can I make my business have more impact? And so instead of looking at other coaches of how to do that, 
I'm looking at other businesses. How do they give back? How do they have um, a project that they align themselves with? How do they do that? So I hope that has been useful for you today. And I would love to know what you're going to take away from this and how you're going to progress and I guess where you need help. And the reason that I'm asking where do you need help is because it can be very easy to get overwhelmed in all this situation. And I know myself when I'm making those moves of like, right, I get that nudge, like I've got to step up here or there's a, ch there's a change coming. I've got to do X, Y, and Z. Sometimes I'm like, right, I've got to write it all down. And then suddenly I look and I go, oh my goodness, I've got 57 things on my list and I re and they're all really chunky things. I don't know where to start. So I invite you to think about what you need next. And this may be listening to another podcast. This may, you can go on my website, by the way, nikkiraby.com, and they're all categorized. So if you need help um, getting more strategic about elevating your personal brand, for example, or if you want to go into the money section, you can go there. Equally, you can follow my four-step program. So if you go um, on my website, on the navigation, they it's broken down into plan, package, present and propel. So depending on where you are up to, there's always going to be lots of resources. And of course, I can work with you one on one or you can do my signature program. But I would love you to think about what you need next and really be disciplined with yourself if you can and go, what do I really need next? Because there are some things that will come later down the line. There are some things where you're like, actually, it's not a 2021 moment. Maybe it's a 2023 moment. Certainly, like, that's when my daughter will go to school. And I suddenly realise that, ah, oh, okay, that might open up options, like not having children in the house five days a week. Wow, what would that feel like? And, um, yeah, it's it's really interesting. Anyway, that's another story for another time. Let me know um, how I can support you. Do book in a free 15 minute call with me if you'd like to do that before the end of the year. Jam and Plan Live is coming on the 11th of January. I'll tell you about that another time. But if you want to join us, I would love to see you there. Have a lovely day, whatever you're doing. And I'll speak to you very soon. Lots of love. Bye.